Hey everybody, Retro Power Guy here. Today I'm going to walk through how to set up and map your N64 gamepad controller with RetroPie. Now I have done a tutorial video on this process in the past, however, it was for the older version of RetroArch, so this one is going to be for the revised version. Um, depending on which version that you have on your current setup, you might want to look at this video or you might want to look at the other one. So I'm going to put a link in the description below to our original video, just in case that one lines up a little bit more with what you have on your specific build. And again, you could have either of these options here. Both are pretty much the exact same sort of setup. However, they do look a little bit different. So we have been getting a lot of requests lately to go over the new revised version and just put out another video. So we're gonna do exactly that. So once you jump into your RetroPie game collection card, you're gonna first navigate to your main menu, which you can do on any gamepad controller, obviously. You're not gonna do that on your brand new N64 controller because that's not yet configured. So I actually have my um, keyboard here. So I'm just going to jump into the main menu. I'm gonna jump down to configure input. You could do this on your regular gamepad controller or you can do this on uh, your keyboard, whatever you have hooked up on RetroPie currently configured. So navigate into your configurations. You're going to get this prompt here that says, are you sure you want to configure input? We'll go ahead and select yes. And now we are going to grab our N64 controller here. Make sure that it's fully plugged into your Raspberry Pi. And we're just going to hold down any button on our gamepad controller. When we get this prompt here, you can see under configure input, it says one gamepad detected. So I'm just going to hold the A button. You'll see the name of this particular controller populate in the bottom of that box. And now we could just jump into our configuring here. Uh, we are gonna just go along with these prompts. So we'll do D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right. Um, start is going to be the start button here in the center. And for select, we're gonna hit C down. For A, we're gonna hit A. For B, we're gonna hit B. For X, we're actually going to go in and hit the C left button. And for Y, we're gonna hit the C up button. And for left shoulder, we'll hit the left shoulder. For right shoulder, we'll hit the right shoulder. For left trigger, we're gonna hit the Z trigger on the back here. And for right trigger, we are going to hit the C right button. So now we don't have any thumbs on this particular controller, so we're just gonna bypass that. In order to bypass, you can hit any of the buttons you've already configured. I'm just gonna hold A just to bypass each of the thumb options here. And now for the left analog, we are going to use our joystick here in the center. So for left analog up, we're just gonna push this um, joystick up. For down, we're gonna go down. For left, we're gonna go left. And right, we're gonna go right. Now for the right analog, we don't have another analog on here, so we're just gonna bypass that. Again, hit any button you've already configured. I'm just gonna hit A, bypass each of these right analog functions. And now for the hotkey, we are going to hit the Z trigger once again. So obviously for the hotkey, um, we're not gonna be hitting just the trigger in order to exit games. We're gonna hit the trigger and the start, and that's always gonna exit you back to your game collection menu from any ROM that you're already in. So just to confirm all of these mappings, we're just going to hit okay. To hit okay, we'll just hit the A button here. It'll load for a moment or two and we'll advance right past this back to our main menu. So you can see just navigating the D-pad here, we're able to go up and down. So I'm going to hit B to back out of this and we're gonna jump into N64. And we're just gonna jump into any title here. I always go to Mario Kart 64. That's just the one I'm most familiar with in this particular collection. I know exactly how everything's supposed to be laid out in terms of the controls. So I can easily assess whether it's been uh, configured correctly or if there is an issue. So that's just the one I'm jumping into. I'm going to let this load for a second here. Once we get to our first screen in the actual ROM, we're going to hit the Z trigger and the C left button to open up RetroArch. So we see that our controller is loaded in on the left hand side. So I'm going to just hit again that Z trigger and C left. It opens up this RetroArch menu. And we have to hit the B button to back out one page. You see that we back out to the quick menu. Now we're gonna navigate over to the right to settings and drop down to input. Next, we're gonna go all the way down here to port one binds. And we're gonna continue down here and you'll see all of the uh, different mapping options here. It's very similar to what we just saw on RetroPie. However, this one is laid out a little bit differently. 
So for each of these options, we have to just map them. Some of them are mapped correctly, some of them aren't. So we're just gonna go one by one, pretty much exactly what we did before. So how this works is this is the A button here. So we're gonna select it with the A button and then we will hit the A button and that assigns the function to that particular button. Same thing with B, we'll select it with A and then we'll hit the B button. We'll go down to start, select it with A, hit the start button. Same for all the D-pad options here. Select it, D-pad up, select it, D-pad down, select it, D-pad left, select it, D-pad right. Now we'll go over to shoulder, left shoulder, select it, right shoulder, Z-trigger, select it with A, pull the Z-trigger in the back, and now this is where it starts to look a little bit different than the other version of RetroArch. So we're gonna actually bypass the control stick options that are all um, set to auto here on the right hand side. And we're gonna go right down to C buttons. So again, this is where it differs from the previous tutorial that we did on the older version of RetroArch. So in order to do this correctly now, we need to go in here and assign each of these C buttons. So the first one we're gonna do which is C button X. And you'll notice that the first one and the second one look exactly the same. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So for the first C button X, we are going to go with C right. So I selected C right here. You'll see that that populates on the screen as one. Go to the next option for C button X. And for this one, we're gonna do C button left. So we'll select it with A, C button left. That's gonna populate as number three. Next one is C button Y, the first one. For this one, we are gonna go C down. So we'll select it with A and hit the C down button. This populates in as number two. And our final option here is C button Y, the second one. And for this one, we'll select it with A and we'll do C up. This is gonna populate in as number zero. So if we look at all of our C buttons here, there's gonna be four of them, and it's gonna read, if you've done this correctly, as one, three, two, zero on the right-hand column. So that's all we need to do for mapping on here. So we're gonna go down all the way. It's gonna loop us back through to the top of the options here, and we are gonna select Save Auto Config. You cannot skip this process here. Make sure that you always save this auto config, otherwise none of what you just did is going to save. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna exit this and jump back into a ROM. We can do this exactly the same way that we did to jump into it initially, which is hit the Z trigger button and the C left button on our gamepad controller. That'll bring us right back into our Mario Kart 64 game or whatever game ROM you selected for this process today. And you'll be able to play this. Your N64 controller will work perfectly. Um, everything will be to the default settings that were on the original console with this particular controller. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. That was the entire process for setting up and mapping your N64 controller to RetroPie using the revised and updated RetroArch. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. We'd be happy to help you any way that we possibly can with this process. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of tutorials like this one, gameplay demos, product reviews, just a lot of great retro gaming content in general. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.